Hello, this is Father Andy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 17th week in Ordinary Time. And today is a special memorial. Today is the memorial of St. John Vianney, who is a priest and a patron of all priests, also known as the Cure of Ars. And I would uh, encourage you to read up on the life of this most amazing holy priest, this wonderful saint of the church today. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brother James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, we have Matthew's uh, version of Jesus' encounter in his hometown of Nazareth, and this is after he had begun his ministry. And uh, in going to Nazareth, he did what he did in all of the other cities and towns where he traveled, and that is he went to the synagogue first, and he began to teach there. And Uh, Of course, it may have been uh, several years since he was in Nazareth, but coming back, uh, he's always, as any traveling rabbi, given a place of honor in the synagogue where he would be able to speak. And when he spoke, one of the things that you often hear about Jesus in speaking in the synagogues, it's that he spoke with authority. And it's a very different way of approach than the uh, most uh, most of the rabbinical talks, because most rabbis, when they would go to the synagogue, would not necessarily speak with authority. They would kind of give some ideas and say, "Well, as Rabbi so and so said, or as another rabbi said, and this might be." And so they would kind of give it that type of treatment. But Jesus went and spoke with authority. He explained the scriptures as they were. And so they were astonished by this. And of course, it says where they that they said, where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? So they were uh, looking at the way he was teaching, but also thinking about the reputation of the miracles that they had heard about that Jesus performed in other places. But then this is where things turn. And they began to question Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary? And they go on to list his brothers and sisters. And remember that those are terms used for cousins and others in the family. It isn't literally a brother uh, in that or a sister in that respect. But they name others that live there in the city that are related to him. And, And then they just say, where did this man get all this? In other words, we know who he is. They, what they did at this point is they basically stopped his growth. They stopped their understanding of who he was on the basis of how they remember him as a younger boy. They don't allow him to grow. They don't allow him to become who he really was or is in their sight and they took offense at him and this is where jesus makes that observation a prophet is not without honor in his na- except in his native place and in his own house in other words you know you're not going to believe me because you've basically pigeonholed me as being what i used to be and not how i've revealed myself to you at this point interestingly in other uh, Gospels, they turn on him and basically try to kill him. But Matthew doesn't uh, record that particular point. He just goes on to say that Jesus did not work many mighty deeds because of their lack of faith. 
And I, I think that um, there's a, a really amazing uh, encounter here that we need to hold on to. That when we leave Jesus at the point of uh, where we used to think of him or how we used to think of him, that we can basically suffocate his ability to have influence in our lives. And we have to be very careful not to do that. Uh, I remember many years ago when I was in college, I was asked to read a book called If God Does Not Die. And I was not really happy about reading a book about the death of God. And I took exception with it with the school authorities at the (laughs) university I was attending. And they said, well, if you don't want to read it, uh, then you don't graduate. Well, being a man of great courage and principle, I went ahead and read the book. Well, I found out it, it was probably one of the best books I've ever read during that whole year at school because the book talks about that if you don't allow a more primitive, immature, childish understanding of God to die, he cannot reveal himself fully and completely as he really is. And that's really what happened to the people here in Nazareth. They wouldn't allow their other understanding of Jesus to die in order for him to truly reveal himself as he really was. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I think this is a good takeaway for today is Uh, for us to kind of maybe do an inventory, uh, take an inventory of how we're living our lives and are there perhaps ideas of God that we may have formed as a child or as a young adult or uh, due to some misunderstanding and miscommunication that really prohibit us from allowing God to reveal himself as he truly is to us today? Are there some preconceived ideas or Uh, thoughts and uh, just, you know, compelling ideas that really are blocking our Lord from really revealing himself as he really is. I think one of the things that we can pray for is that every time we pick up the scripture, every time we attend mass, that we be open to God revealing himself afresh and anew in the wonderful ways in which he lives and moves and has his being among us. And so let's just maybe take some time to think about that. Am I blocking God just by the virtue that I have held ideas that may not be truly accurate about him? So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.